But today it's Wednesday, it's 2.35ish p.m. soon in Sweden. Uh, my name is Donny, KDH Innovation, biggest tech university in Sweden, and of course the best one. Every Wednesday I go live with my innovation figure, but apart from that, you make sure to follow me on LinkedIn and, well, primarily on LinkedIn, where I post almost every day on inspiration, motivation, startups and entrepreneurship. Uh, follow Innovation Fika with Donnie, which is these Wednesdays, every Wednesday, my coffee break chat with a super cool, interesting entrepreneur. And then, of course, all of my content is aggregated on uh, Medium, where you can find everything there as well. This show, Wednesdays, is live on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Univid, and Twitch. So, all over the world, I think we have about two viewers on Twitch. That's really cool. Um, well, I've gone from one to two, so I've increased, like, double that. Enough about that, enough about me. Today we are meeting a, uh, a great friend uh, and an alumni here from KTH Innovation. And I am happy to introduce him into the studio. Welcome here. <laughs> Welcome here. Welcome in. Welcome Hamza. In. Hey. How good to see you. Yeah, nice. Likewise. Welcome. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, you can, you're, yeah, good. We're kind of, we're just finding, finding our way here in the picture. Um, welcome back to KTH. Thanks. Okay. Hamza was actually a bit late because he was trying to find his way back into where we are. We moved offices since yeah. you were here last. I went to the old office. So you went to the old office? I've been away for too long. You did? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's great to have you back. Yeah. It's great to see you again. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't met you for years. Yeah, it's been a long time. So Hamza, you are the, uh, the founder and CEO of Echo Bloom. Correct. Correct. So let's just start with that. Let's just tell everybody who are you and what is Echo Bloom? So yeah, um, where do I start? I am uh, one of the founders of EcoBloom, um, uh, old al alumni um, as well. And studied here at KTH, mechanical, uh, mechanical engineering department, mm -hmm. and um, uh, uh, run an agritech startup where we help farmers improve their food production process, reduce yeah. waste, and that's you know our way of, of trying to make the world a better place. Hmm? But it started, Echo Bloom started with something kind of yeah. different, right? It did, it did, it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We started, and that's what we did at KTH Innovation. We developed this uh, small IoT powered uh, aquaponic system for consumers. Yeah. So, like a connected small miniature greenhouse for consumers. And it was kind of, it was kind of, it was like this, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this big, like a small yeah. aquarium, basically. Like an aquarium, and yeah. it was both, it was both fish and food. Oh, fish and um, plants. Plants. Yeah. <laughs> fish and food. <laughs> and fish food, too, as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, exactly, an aquaponic system, and that's the appeal of it, right? Where you utilize the fish waste as the nutrient source for the plants, and the yeah. plants act as a uh, somewhat of a filter for for, mm -hmm. for for the fish, as it kind of filters the water that recirculates yeah. back to the fish. It was fun, it was nice. We learned a lot from that you know, yeah. journey and the product yeah. itself, and, and and that's what we did and, and, and at KTH Innovation as well. But uh, the vision was always bigger, and mm -hmm. the dream was always uh, greater as well. And, and uh, so today we focus on the... Uh, yeah, developing AI powered solutions for indoor farms. For oh, indoor farms? Indoor farms. Indoor farms. Big, large scale okay. like, um, 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 uh, food producers. Okay. Yeah, so we help food producers produce more efficiently. So what, is your, what does your IoT solution do? Today, um, basically, we uh, connect the farm to the cloud um, yeah. uh, by, um, through various channels. We have different sensors measuring the air quality and the water quality, and we have cameras documenting the plant growth process. So we oh. push all the data to the cloud and where we have algorithms analyzing every aspect of the plant's life cycle. And by doing so, we can make intelligent predictions about, mm. for example, yield and, and also give farmers a deeper insight into their food production by, for example, looking into uh, deviations or anomalies, um, yeah. uh, stress, um, symptoms of stress, etc. Et that our algorithms detect before we do, because much of the farming is visual. Wow. So we... Yeah, basically. but and that's we're talking ag tech now, agri tech. This is agri tech, correct? Agri tech, agri tech, agri tech. Okay, yeah. which ag is tech, agricultural ag tech. technology. Tech. Yeah, correct. That's it's fascinating stuff yeah. because even though we've been doing farming for quite some time, yep, one could still argue that farming is kind of primitive in the way it, it's yeah. done. I mean, you you have earth and you plant a seed and then you water the seed and you hope for some sun, yeah. and then it, it grows and then you try and keep it safe yeah more or less yeah 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 we've been doing the same thing for a long time yeah yeah and it yeah. feels like there's kind of a lot of room for improvement well improvement yeah. and adjustment as yeah, well because yeah, i know so that yeah. the monitoring the monitoring thing is yeah. i mean just by I mean, if we just start somewhere just by monitoring like need for yeah. water yeah or so it's neither too little or too much yeah because i know i kill every single plant yeah. i touch yeah. usually by overwatering. yeah 
Yeah, that's or no case. water in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, too much or too little. <laughs> There's no fine, perfect balance. And that, and you can, you, you can. That's what you do as well, right? Well, the grown technique that we use, for example, in the Eco Garden, the consumer yeah. product. The appeal of it is that you never water plants, right? They grow in water. And that's of also course. the whole point with hydroponics. It's cultivation of plants in water without soil. Yeah. So you're already... So there's no soil? There, there's no soil. There's nowhere. No, no, no. That, that's, oh. that's, that's, that's the whole you know, point and the concept of hydroponics, yeah. which is commonly used in indoor farming in general. Whether you grow in horizontally or vertically, you grow... Um, uh, you grow in water without soil. So this, you, you don't add water or, you know, you, you don't water your plant because they grow in water. What you do add is, is nutrient. Um, okay. So at least since you remove soil, you have to nu manually add nutrient. But uh, there's so many things that happen in the environment. You know, uh, the plants grow in, in different ways, you know, depending on how the, the environment. So you, 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 if the environment changes, the plants get stressed. They release a chemical compound and, and that's why they taste different or they grow differently or they look different. Oh, wait, wait. You're saying that stressed plants taste different than yeah. calm, well, meditative plants. You, you stress the plant by stressing the environment it grows in. So it, it, if you start tweaking, say, the pH value or other parameters yeah. in the air or water, then then you're stressing the plant. Okay. Um, and, and that's why it will you know grow differently. It will taste differently. It will look differently. Uh, That's fascinating. I, I saw a, I think it was Mythbusters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was an episode of Mythbusters. You know, the guys that test myths and things. And it was this myth about talking to plants. I know. I or saw playing, that one. Playing music know, plants. Yeah, yeah. And they had like four greenhouses. On the roof. Uh, on the, on yeah, the roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they played like classical music and yeah. pop music and yeah. something else. And then they had like death metal. Yeah, 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 one. Yeah. And that one grew like yeah. mad. Yeah, yeah. But it, then probably those plants were like stressed. <laughs> Maybe, probably. <laughs> unless they are, know. unless they were death metal yeah. fans. Yeah, yeah, there are many parameters, definitely. <laughs> or, or they would be, yeah, exactly, fans of death metal. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. But uh, it, it's quite. There's so many questions, Mark. Creek. Do we our, know everything that's yet? That's the thing. We don't. That's the thing. We don't. We're still like sort of yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. guesstimating. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to your point, we've grown for so long, yet there's still so many unanswered yeah. questions. Um, but I mean, compared to medicine, a very short analogy of, of medicine. I mean, today, the I think the medicines that we have developed today are the very hit and miss. Yeah. Like, oh, we think this will work. Yeah. Let's try this on a thousand people. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it kind of worked. Yeah. Not too many people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're here. Yeah. It's okay, and if, yeah. if you know, if if enough people are okay with it, yeah. and few enough people are yeah. not okay yeah. with it, yeah. then it's okay. Yeah. But it's so hit and miss. Yeah, it is. It is. No, so the whole true. tailored medicine thing, which yeah. is another yeah. another episode. That's episode I don't know, sixty five later on. Yeah. This is episode fifty six, by the way, of my innovation fika. That's just yeah. getting up to the. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, it's thanks to you and everybody else coming to my innovation fika that I'm getting up to the the numbers. Anyway, back to the plants. Oh, back okay. to back to Echo Bloom. You're yeah. still Echo Bloom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Equilum Technologies. So a, not a farmer, an indoor farmer. We help indoor farmers. Yeah. And is, is that as like a, not a, a normal, I mean, any farmer could have an indoor farming or is it like a different kind of no, thing? No, no, I mean, the concept is known as a controlled environment agriculture, CEA. And, and that essentially- right. Controlled environment, environment agriculture. agriculture. You grow in a controlled environment. It could be a container farm, it could be a greenhouse, it could be a you know warehouse where they grow vertically. Yeah. Anything that is grown in a controlled environment, mm -hmm. uh, that's what we can. So greenhouses is, in it's a controlled environment, yeah. right? You have it's kind of in houses. What? Well, it is. You have a, <laughs> if you have a room, right. then it's in a in yeah. house and, and yeah. walls. Then you're you're in house. Yeah. If you grow in here, you're growing in a controlled environment. Yeah, you know, I was think, I was thinking about like you know the the pictures you see from uh, like the ultraviolet light and there's a parking yeah. garage and people are going around like in hazmat suits and they're yeah, like yeah, yeah, super. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not no. my sister's greenhouse. So yeah. The garden. Yeah, well, garden. that is a controlled environment. Well, I guess it is. Yeah. I guess it is. Okay, so then they then you go there and yeah. then you install your equipment. Correct. And then from that, there is a m data that comes out. Correct. That I then can use to improve the environment. Exactly. You see, I I'm learning as I go here. This is this is fascinating yeah. stuff. Yeah. Really cool. And how how are you getting on? What's uh, the status? So where are we? Yeah, where are we? That's a good question. <laughs> we it's going well. I mean, we've been growing from my, I think we were two people at the time when we were yeah. at the generation to two and a half and and we're a team of uh, six plus two and plus four so six full-time two part-time and four uh, researchers um and a bunch of investors as well so yeah things are moving you know forward uh, yeah um, well i mean it's a 
I'm always fascinated to see the, all the pivoting that goes on because for you, it was probably, I don't know if you had like a huge change of direction or if it was just a number of small things. But for, for me, when I meet the teams again after a number of years yeah. and they're doing for me, a completely different thing than they did then, yeah. even though but maybe for them, it was just like sort of a, a you know, a slight adjustment. Yeah. And then in the end, they ended up somewhere else. Yeah. And it's just so cool to see how you, based on the same purpose that you had from the beginning. Yeah. I mean, it's been the same yeah, yeah. basic idea. Yeah. You're doing something yeah. like different. Yeah, today. we kind of take, we kind of, we took the technology yeah. and we further developed it in a much larger context. Um, and that story has, that story has come back in these speakers so many times when I meet uh, successful alumni you know, after a couple of years yeah. where they had this first idea, the first technology and the first sort of attempt yeah. wasn't sort of the right attempt, yeah. but the, the need was this, is the same. Yeah. And the purpose is the same, and they're the same kind of technology. And it's just it's just about finding the right sort of application and application area. Yeah, and yeah. fascinating and well done so far. Yeah, and, and we're getting some questions here. Uh, this is cool, Felipe. Uh, Felipe Gallardo. Uh, it sounds like an exciting and complex product. How is the process of growing your tech and commercial teams to be able to deliver while the customer base is still limited? Ah, that was a question about uh, running a startup there. How do you grow a team yeah. um, whilst you still aren't sort of, the money isn't just sort of yeah. pouring in? No, fair enough. It's a good question. And um, uh, I mean, there's no clear answer to that question. I think the most important thing is that you, you know, go, go back to what we'll get to in a bit, but, but you know, surround yourself with people that believe in the same vision. That yeah. you share you. I mean, I think that's one of the key points here that, you know, I've been fortunate to work with brilliant, brilliant people, mm -hmm. and they all share the same vision. And we go through the same, you know, challenges, the ups yeah. and downs, and, 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 but we still have that, you know, the, the mindset that this is temporary, things will get better. Yeah. And, you know, um, uh, what we don't know, we will always learn, just keep pushing and be patient. I think those, that's extremely important. So having those, that type of people, um, investors will see that because investors, yeah. they will invest in you and the team. They don't give a shit about the idea yeah. or the product. It's like, if you have a good team, you can do anything. And uh, if they see that and they really see that culture, then they will invest in you. And I think that's that will allow you to to keep building and doing what you're doing and, and always working, you know. And that is, you actually said something important there because a seasoned investor will also understand the number of pivots yes. that you will need to yeah. do along the way. And they will know that even though you started with a, a desktop yeah. aquarium, yeah. you know, in a couple of years yeah. with your ideas, you yeah. know, technology and the people that you have, yeah, exactly. you'll be over here anyway. Yeah. And, you know, the people who've yeah. been with it and they, yeah. they get it. That's so totally Definitely. correct there. But to get those people on board, you as a founder or the founding team need to be super clear. Yeah. on what you're actually trying to achieve because you want people to buy into what you want to try, right? We think we're clear, but <laughs> <laughs> you're never clear. You always try to figure out what is it that you're doing. I mean, every day we, we you know, we make, we make, you know, jokes about this and make fun of, of, of all the questions we, we have about, you know, what is it what we're doing? But yeah. I think definitely you have to be, of course, clear to some extent. But I mean, if you have a clear goal and vision, yeah. I think that's the most important thing, how you get there that's a different story. Of course. And that's where you pivot and you try different things. And, you know, and it, it, pivoting doesn't necessarily mean that you have to completely change your business model or your, your product. It could be the way you communicate things, the way you market yep. things, the way you package things, the way you position the company. Um, uh, so, so you can do that in different ways. Um, but no, absolutely. Um, being clear. And, and I mean, I, I question, I, I ask myself the same question. Like, why why did you join you know yeah. Bloom and, and, and you know so what is the what is the or was the and yeah. is the, the the vision what is the sort of the the purpose here well we want to help um improve the way we grow food um, yeah and, and you know the bigger goal and, and dream is to, to to build the world's largest digital indoor farm mm -hmm. uh, without owning a single single indoor farm yeah kind of like uber being the world's largest taxi company without owning any taxi yeah. cars or uber airbnb being the world's largest mm -hmm. hotel chain uh, and simply we want to kind of achieve that um, that vision and goal as well and but uh, of course what we do is 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 trying to help create a a, a better contribute to a better world yeah you know a more sustainable future um for, for the coming generations and, and we do that by helping farmers yeah because Agriculture is one of the core um, uh, problems with, with or contributing factors to climate change and greenhouse gases. Yeah. So if you want to change the world, we can 
stuck back here. Of course. Uh, keep the questions coming out there. Uh, we're here live for another 15 minutes, so keep it on, keep it up. Otherwise, you'll have to watch the recording and you won't be able to ask us any questions unless you, of course, connect to Hamza on LinkedIn, uh, which you, of course, everybody will do as well. I have some more questions about uh, the whole sort of agri tech yeah. thing and what else do you see going on out there? I mean, you probably meet a lot of other startups, you probably meet a lot of farmers and you know, what's what sort of what's cooking? There's a lot happening within the field of both agri tech and food tech. Yeah, I mean, there are two different industries and, and worlds, but still, you know, intertwined and, and uh, connected. Um, uh, there's a lot happening. I mean, I love that how there's so many startups trying to tackle the same problem, but from different angles. Yeah, um, and uh, um, everything from 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 how things are produced, the post harvest process, mm -hmm. pre pre harvest or, or, or growing process. Um, we see different things. People grow in different things as well. I mean, uh, from a tech perspective, but also the, the farmers themselves trying mm -hmm. to grow different ways, different types of crops, algae, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but based on that, based on that. One could argue that being a farmer today is super high tech because I mean, compared yeah. to a farmer yeah. 50 or 60 yeah. or 70 years ago, yeah. today it's everything. I mean, even things like biochar and, and yeah. uh, carbon uh, capture yeah. things and energy harvesting because yeah. you have all of this uh, land for solar cells and yeah. biomass fuel and you know, all of that going on. I mean, being a farmer today could actually be like the super high tech. Absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> we, like you say, I mean, to your point with, with trying to implement different types of things. And I think they see there's a greater willingness to adopt this type mm -hmm. of technology, you know, automation systems, whether it's, you know, satellite imagery or drones or, 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 or um, other types of sensors and tech. tech. Yeah. Um, I, uh, they see the value in it. I mean, that helps them, it, you know, this idea of, of digitizing and automating. We live in a digital world. I mean, yeah. everything becomes more and more digital. So, so of course, agriculture will also be of course. digital. Yeah. Um, so and that's what we work with. I think automation is going to be, uh, I think one of the secrets, I think and that's one of the key secrets of automation and, uh, you know, going digital is yeah. figuring out what works better being automated and digital yeah. and where should we actually keep a human yeah. in the loop yeah. to keep it like a human because most mistakes I see when it comes to automation and, and digitization is yeah. when people like do everything digital yeah. and they completely lose touch with yeah. the, the humanity of it exactly sometimes in some places and some links there needs to be a human yeah. and sometimes in some places there should not be a human yeah, for sure and that figuring that out and also I can I can imagine in because you just mentioned like a, you, you mentioned like pre, during, post. I mean, there are a number of steps there. And I can imagine that there is a, probably a p opportunity for automation in, in every in every step, more yeah. or less. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, no. I saw a self-driving tractor. That's a, I saw, a, is it Einrad John or Deere or which, I don't remember which, oh, okay. uh, one of the big, uh, it's funny because all of these, all of the, the big car manufacturers and, and all of the new ones as well, they know they've been struggling with the self-driving car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the tractor guys, they've been yeah. sort of by themselves. Yeah. Because it's kind of easier to develop a, a self-driving yeah. uh, farm machine because yeah. you don't have to have the same roads. And no, like exactly. And the objects. But yeah, John Deere have been working on that for, for quite some time. How about drones? Uh, there are drones. There exist. I mean, usually drones are, are controlled by a human. Um, yeah. So... And I think that is also a challenge, and we mm -hmm. see that happen like everywhere. Um, it, it depends, to, you know, what what the purpose is. Mm -hmm. um, but, but drones are used outdoors mainly, um, only I would say. Um, Do you have any indoor drones for your indoor farming? Like small? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> secret stuff going on there. That would be. I mean, that would be. I mean, just I can just imagine really small. Anyway, we let's episode one hundred and fifty-six. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. When we get when we get back to that. Yeah. Okay, but who can start indoor farming? Anyone can um, if you have the resources. Yeah, well, yeah, but uh, what do I need? Well, well, the, 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 I've got a garage. Can I start in front of my can. garage? You can absolutely. And you know, farming—it has been this idea of that like, you know, being passed down generation after yeah. generation, and you come from a family of you know farmers. But but th that's when we talk high tech as well. You, you know, for example, what we do with technology, we don't replace farmers with the sensors and you know the, the tech we implement and. We help them make better decisions, decisions yeah. based on data. Yeah. That's what we do. Um, so that makes the farming process much easier, which also allows more people to become farmers, modern farmers. Yeah. You don't need to come from, you know, a 50 year old, 
you know, farming background. Nice. Or, and, and, and so so anyone can become a farmer. And we'll see a lot more of these small farming hubs popping up everywhere. I mean, we see that in also in Stockholm, you know, in, in warehouses and rooftops, basements and whatnot, that the future will have many of these types of small yeah. farming hubs all over the world. And these ones will be producing the food we consume in restaurants and mm -hmm. all. I saw, I saw one of the... Um... The big uh, grocery stores, they were actually thinking of uh, implementing, I think they have tried it now as well, implementing indoor farming uh, facilities under, in the, like in the parking garage, yeah. under their yeah. warehouse. So yeah. you could more or less just, you know, just get fresh, yeah. fresh uh, salad or whatever yeah, on, for the day yeah. from the, from the, the farm yeah. sort of downstairs. No, absolutely. I mean, IKEA are doing this with their containers that they're starting to test now and pop on their, uh, the, um, the parking lot. So oh. they produce the the leafy greens and and herbs in the containers on the parking lot to the restaurants that they have inside the where uh, the, the, the the building. That's cool. Yeah, it's quite cool actually. And it is. I, I, if you think about it, they are probably one of the world's largest, if not the world's largest, restaurant chains. They are. Yeah. I think they actually. Yeah. I just yeah. read somewhere they are. Yeah, there we go. The number of meatballs yeah. sold in IKEA yeah, all yeah. around the world. I mean, every <laughs> every warehouse has has a has a restaurant, so they yeah. can make a huge impact as of well. Course. Uh, um, so if they would switch to something like this and become more sustainable, yeah. now we're just waiting for them to have the animals as well there yeah. and for the, yeah. the meatballs. Or we can go green on but the meatballs. They're doing plant-based plant exactly. meatballs as well. So. Exactly. We, we, we're leaving the animals and we're going into plant-based, uh, of course. We're actually looking at the timer. It's, this is yeah. just a half an hour coffee break, yeah. chat with wonderful <laughs> people. Uh, we always leave uh, the audience with the top three tips. We have Hamza's top three tips today. Uh, today we're focusing on uh, making it work and you know succeeding as an entrepreneur and, and from your, your journey, the, some experience that you have from where you started to, to where you are today and going forward, yeah. right? And I know that there's um, some good ones here. Um, so Hamza, top three tips. Tip number one being surround yourself with great people. Yeah, yeah, very important. It comes to my you know point before. Um, they are the ones that are you know, making everything become a reality. They bring the ideas yeah. to life. And, and, and uh, to the question we had earlier, like, like they are the ones that we push each other. We go through everything together. Yeah. And you know, it's a small family, uh, basically yeah. trying to, to, to build a unicorn. Yeah. And uh, so it's really, really important that you have people that are smarter than you, but also share the same vision as you do. And to that, I can say that the, the myth, because I will say that it's a myth, the myth of the lone a successful entrepreneur and we see all of these people that you know, one person standing on a stage yeah. they have, they all say that they would never be there without the people they surround themselves yeah. with so you know don't believe the whole thing about doing going about it alone you need a good team yeah. that believes in the same thing and for that we have tip number two have a clear vision yeah and explain why yeah yeah no definitely you and the team you need to all be you know aligned with what you're doing and where you're going and, and, and same you know if you have a clear vision then also investors will will, will, will they buy in on on that same vision yeah um, uh, otherwise you you'll have enough that's kind of one of the reasons you, you'll see founders disagreeing and and, and and the company you know just breaks down and splits they split up and because of not having a cleared and common and shared vision. Yeah. Um, I think it's uh, extremely... Have you spent a lot of time working as a team on your vision? Yeah, we do. We have. We have. Um, uh, and we always go back to the vision. Yeah. What are we doing? What's the vision? What's the mission? Mm -hmm. um, even, you know, with investors. So they're mm -hmm. all clear and aligned yeah. on the same thing, that this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. Um, and so everyone should be able to, to, to explain what the vision is. Yeah. Um, but even if you've been doing it for a while, I think this is something you keep keep oh, iterating yeah. on and you keep going back to. And and, uh, and I also said something that I've seen a lot when it comes to startups is that you tend to lose yourself in doing things, yeah. right? And you get so focused on everything. Yeah. You get so focused on what you are doing yeah. and you forget about how you're doing it yeah. and why you're doing exactly. it. Exactly. And sometimes you need to take a step back and say, but how are we doing this? Yeah, yeah. And why are we doing it? Yeah. And that is super important. Yeah. And I, but I see again and again and again, how you get lost, not you, but other people. Yeah, well, you, get, you get lost in, in doing stuff yes, and, and what? Definitely. It's like, what is it? Simon Sinek's uh, golden circle with the why, yeah, how, exactly. and what. Exactly. And then, of course, tip number three here from Hamza is be patient. Yeah, yeah. When, when were you at KTH Innovation? Uh, oof, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, 
I don't know. I don't remember. Many years ago. <laughs> a number of years ago. Yeah. yeah. Be patient. Yeah. Yeah. Be patient. Definitely. And, and, and back to the same question or the question earlier, you know, you have to just believe in what you do and, and, and be extremely patient. If that's one of the biggest things that I've learned is, is to be patient. Um, and, and I think these small successes you should celebrate, which everyone talks about, yeah. right? Whether it's being a, getting accepted to an incubator or, or winning a competition or, you know, ha, mm. it could be anything. Yeah. You know, the first customer, celebrate those small successes because they are somewhat of a receipt that what you're doing is, is great, good, it's interesting. People like what you're doing and you're moving in the right direction. Of course, you'll be probably pivoting along the way, but I think being patient and and, and same with like with the investor, you know, uh, the investors. We worked full time for a long time yeah. before we got uh, you know investors, and then could take out mm -hmm. the salary. So, be extremely patient. I know every every single thing that I have started myself has yeah. taken. It takes seven years to yeah. start a company. Yeah. You know, it, it takes time, yeah. and you think it's everything has to happen today yeah. and tomorrow, yeah. and we need to release it next month. Yeah. And that, that yet you know yeah. this is going to take years yeah and it does it always takes yeah. years it does that's why you have to love what you do it's indeed so important actually I have one last question here from uh felipe i will just uh, remove the uh, hang on a minute felipe we're coming up to your question there we'll take that one away thank you for the great tips uh one last question there what advice what advice would you give for us with green ideas starting to work with kth innovation to get the most out of it <laughs> Um, for everyone then who isn't that kid, yeah, <laughs> what? Maybe a good question for you. Yeah, come to uh, knock on your door. No, I, I, I will ask that question. Yeah, yeah, I will say if you are affiliated to KTH, of course, come to KTH Innovation. We give free early stage support. Anybody studying, researching, or working at KTH. The 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 one key to success, I'd say, is you know spending time on your idea and trusting the process you know working through the process if you just dabble with it a bit as like a like a hobby thing then it's a hobby which is okay and i you know i don't want but i wouldn't put any value in that but if it's you know either it's a hobby and what you're dabbling with or it's something that you really want to achieve and then you need to actually focus have a vision have a team and put some work into it and and actually you know get your hands dirty and and Give it a good attempt. We will help you in any way we can to make it work, as long as you commit to run your project. You know that's the thing. You know, I'd say. I agree, hundred percent. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you so much. I mean, it's actually three o'clock here. This is just a half an hour coffee break every Wednesday afternoon, two thirty p.m. You watch my innovation figure today with Hamza, a dear friend and fantastic alumni, um, successful entrepreneur. Uh, Pivoted all the way up to where he is today. Yeah. How many are you today, by the way, in the team? Yeah, so we are uh, eight plus four. Eight plus four? Yeah. Well, excellent. I'm really happy to have you back at KTH. Thanks. Please uh, don't stay away for another five years. Come yeah. back and yeah. hang out with us and, yeah. you know, join the, the... We have a really cool alumni community now as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's growing. So, and everybody else, uh, you can find Hamza and Echo Bloom on LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, Echobloom.se as well. Yeah. Check them out. Follow them. Uh, follow me. I will see you next week for the same show, same time, same place. Thank you all and uh, bye for now.